Welcome to Dare to Dream. This is Debbie Dashinger. And today's show features Marie Diamond, who's going to be talking about how to feng shui your life. Marie is a consultant to a who's who of celebrities in film, music, C-suites, global leadership, sports, and even in royal palaces. And Marie is going to help us understand how to use our home to attract a dream life. Dare to Dream has been around for almost 17 years. This podcast show won three Talk Positive Radio Awards, won the COV Award for Best Radio Podcast, Welp Magazine named Dare to Dream, one of the top 20 best podcasts to listen to this year, and it is high ranking under Apple Podcasts and Self-Improvement. This show is sponsored by Dr. Dane here in Access Consciousness. They do energy work out into the world. If you'd like to be a facilitator or take one of their classes, go to Dr. Dane here, H-E-E-R dot com. Now, something very special coming up. First of all, I want to announce coming up soon on Gaia TV, I'm interviewed by George Nori on Beyond Belief. And also, I was just interviewed by George Nori on Coast to Coast AM radio this past midnight. You can still catch that on their website. Phenomenal two-hour conversation. And you can join me, Debbie Dashinger, on a celebrity cruise in December 2024 for an unforgettable journey exploring the wonders of the Yucatan. I've never been. I'm excited. Join me. You can visit portalatsea.com. It's not portals, it's portalatsea.com. And you can secure your spot on the Portal at Sea Cosmic Origins Cruise. Joining me are also incredible other presenters like Sarah Breskman Cosme, Laura Eisenhower, Drs. JJ and Desiree Hertak, JK Ultra, Debbie Solaris, Alan Steinfeld, Susan Shumsky, and Neil Gar and more. Don't miss this. Cabins are booking fast. Register now at portal at c.com and you must type in Debbie Dashinger or Dare to Dream to get your cabin. Experience this phenomenal cruise with amazing top notch presentations plus excursions to Belize, Honduras, Mexico, and much more. Book your cabin now, portal at c.com. And remember, type in Debbie Dashinger or Dare to Dream. Get your cabin for this incredible cruise and all that's going to be shared over this event. Well, my guest today is often remembered for being featured in the global sensation, The Secret. Marie Diamond has built an incredible worldwide following. She's taught more than 1 million students over the past 30 years, and she's a sought-after speaker in more than 30 countries. Marie is a personal, business, and spiritual mentor and consultant to a who's who list of celebrities. Counted among her clients are Steven Spielberg, Jodie Foster, Dan Aykroyd, Big Sean, Paula Abdul, Jason Bateman, and luminaries Jack Canfield, the late Bob Proctor, Dr. John Gray, Marie, Marianne Williamson, and way more. Her latest book, which I'm holding up, is Feng Shui Your Life, A Beginner's Guide to Using Your Home to Attract the Life of your dream. And if you'd like to learn more, go to her name, mariediamond.com. And with that, I welcome the amazing Marie Diamond to Dare to Dream. It is so great to have you. Thank you so much, Debbie, for having me here. And I'm so excited for you and that cruise. I'm like, oh my God, I would love to join that one. <laughs> oh, thank you. And you are welcome. You're welcome to join. You actually should be one of the presenters on that cruise. I wanted to start out by asking you about your name, because what a great name, Marie Diamond. Are you really a diamond? Were you born that way? No, this is not my original name. It's the name that my spiritual master gave to mm -hmm. me. 
um, to use and um, and it's also part of what um, I'm teaching. So we're talking about the multifaceted aspects of a home, both we call it diamond feng shui, diamond dowsing, inner diamond. So we have all these programs that are talking about how to uh, become a multifaceted diamond in your home and in yourself. So, but it's a given name. Yeah, it is a beautiful, perfect name. I was really reflecting, like, there couldn't be anything better. Debbie Ruby, Debbie Emerald. I was going down the list, but it's like <laughs> Diamond is pretty much the apex, right? It is, yeah. Well, a great book, by the way, and I was showing you my notes before we started, because when we read the book, we get to do our personal numbers and figure out directions. I really liked all of that. And then if we have a partner, figure theirs out. You weren't always here doing this. And at 15, you had a pretty extreme near-death experience, serious accident, and a long recovery. And that's when you reached out to your spiritual mentor. Can you talk a little bit about that? It's a segue from what you just shared. Your yeah. spiritual mentor, who was it? What did he tell you? Well, you know, um, I grew up in a a Catholic family in Belgium. And um, so for me, I was very connected with spirit already as a child, I could see energy. Um, I was aware of that. And um, I was just very, you know, spiritual, spiritual and religious in, in that sense. Um, so when I then had a near death experience at 15 after a major accident run over by a truck, um, I actually left my body and went to the other side. And there, there were like beings of light welcoming me. And there was this voice very clearly, and I was very conscious about it, that uh, the voice said, you need to go back because you're here to enlighten more than 500 million people. Now, I had no idea, of course, what that meant. And I returned to my body a couple of days later, you know, really uh, fully conscious. And um, at that moment, I had like, what does that mean, enlightening? I mean, I'm Catholic, right? You don't enlighten, you know, you pray to, to God and to Jesus and, and all the saints. Um, but yeah, for me, it was like, I, I felt like I did something wrong. I was very aware already about visualization. I was visualiz visualizing already very early on. I had a visualization wall. I mean, I was very much into tune already with some of the information because that spiritual mentor came regularly to me. And he was what we would call an immortal. So somebody who would just appear in my dreams or would appear like I could see that being standing there and he would always give me advice. And so after a couple of months being quite sick after the accident, because it was quite traumatic, um, I asked actually at one of these meetings, spiritual meetings, I would call that, like, what did I do wrong? Right. So what is it that I did I not pray enough to God? Was I not a good role model? Like were my thoughts negative? Like I did not saw that accident coming. And he said to me, Well, you have bad feng shui. And that's the first time I heard about that. And so he suggested I would change from the bedroom I was into another bedroom. And so the bedroom of my brothers, they have already left the house. They were already much older than me. And so the, the bedroom I was in was on the north side and there was no sunshine coming in. I was very depressed in that room. I was bullied at school. I was having no friends. I was a lot of, you know, even having an accident. And then I moved to the west side of the house and the west side was the sunlight coming in. Um, I was painting it in orange. I start hanging different images because in the old bedroom were the images of my sister. Like there was like a bedroom passed on to me, right? From her, uh, because also she was much older. And so it's really interesting is that um, suddenly I started having this shift that happened in my life. Like the bullies stopped bullying me like within a week. Like and they've been bullying me for three years, right? And I was like, wow, that's interesting. I started having friends. Um, I started having my first boyfriend. So I was like, and on top of it, the relationship between me and my father who was a very abusive man, actually. He was probably my biggest bully in my life. He really shifted and we started having conversations and there was like this big change in my life. And so I was like, wow, you know, changing the location, 
right? And then changing the colors and the surrounding just really was the start of my feng shui journey. Oh, I love that story. And I resonate. Um, I don't know that I had a significant a change, but I will say I grew up in a particular bedroom that was close to my mother's bedroom. And I was scared all the time. When I went to sleep, I was terrified of the closet. I was terrified. And it was a very small room. And mm -hmm. when my brother moved out and went to college, boy, I couldn't have moved fast enough mm -hmm. all the way down the hall into a much bigger space, two windows. Yeah, it had a whole different life force mm -hmm. to it. And I felt, I think I must have felt very safe because a lot of that terror stopped. Yeah. So powerful stuff. I love that the mentor expressed to you what that the feng shui was off and that you then got to experience that. And did your mentor, even in etheric form, ever express exactly if it was a male, who it was, or it almost yeah. sounds eth ethnically like it may have been an Asian male? Do you know? No, it was actually not. It is some somebody who's in, considered and experienced by other people sometimes. It's a, it's what we call an ascended master called Saint Germain. Mm -hmm. And so I was connecting with him. He would appear. Um, I had other meetings later on uh, that uh, supported me with um, some feng shui and energy work that were more Asian uh, masters. But uh, yeah, that was um, a European uh, looking man. Um, and it was very interesting, you know, as I did not know other people could connect with that person. But then later on, when I was much older, I've, I encountered other people that had similar experience with that same master. So it is um, somebody that lived really in a physical form in the European uh, world till around the 1600s, and then was known to appear regularly um, with leaders in the world that he would just appear um, to share uh, information. And so for me, that was my guiding force. And as a child, you know, it's just like, oh, you know, he, he gave good, good, uh, good feedback. <laughs> so I just using it. And um, but he also at a certain point came to me and told me that I need to become a lawyer. Yeah. And so that's actually I became a lawyer based on his um, his advice. And um, because I wanted to really impact millions of people, you know, 500 million people, how do you do that, right? Now, this is before internet. Now I would open a TikTok account or start a podcast, right? But at that time, it was like, um, I was thinking if I could be a diplomat and become part of a government, I would create different laws. Um, I could perhaps support that. So I became an international lawyer, actually, uh, because I thought like if I don't work for governments, what I did, I worked for the government in Belgium, European uh, government. And I started really exploring um, how to make a difference. But after like five years doing that, I was like, you know, starting already mentoring a lot of people because I had a whole journey of meditation behind me. He was also teaching me meditations. Um, so it was like a whole journey already. At 31, I started actually sharing this information publicly and became a spiritual teacher. Amazing. How interesting. Who would have thought? Are there still pieces of law that you use or include in what you do today? Well, it's really interesting. Um, you know, I, I run a business, right? So... Um, I'm also a business mentor. And so for a lot of um, my clients, sometimes they come to me and, and I would say what I learned from being a lawyer, I have a very analytical mind. So even if I'm totally focused on energy and I'm an energy master, I'm also very analytical. So when I teach this information, even in the book Feng Shui Your Life, I'm very practical. Like, like this is what the problem is, this is what you do, right? So it's like that analytical um, um, lawyer's brain has helped me over the years to be um, practical and um, make it very clear to people what are the steps they have to take. But I still use that for my clients. Sometimes they come to me and like, you know, this is what I would suggest, you know, of course, talk to your lawyer. I'm not a lawyer anymore, but I have um, an ends. An, I would say 
I really get the strategy very well. Yeah. And I see very quickly what the mistakes or what the problems are, because I think lawyers, you know, that's part of what their brain is really good at. They can see very quickly where the problems are. And so from that, I use that. And of course, um, but like I said, I'm not a lawyer any longer, but I still have that mindset. Yeah, your strategy really is amazing. And I want to thank you for something because one of the things in your book that you talk about is the importance of the setup of your office and your desk. Yeah. And I probably have, I kind of have a terrible setup. My back is to the door and, uh, but I am facing a window. I love this window because I look out on plants. It's obviously beautiful light. It's very peaceful for me. And you know, I've heard that before and I've attempted to rearrange my office space, never successfully, no other layout worked. And I'll tell you why it was so genius in your book, Marie, because you were kind enough to say, and by the way, if it doesn't work, if you can't move things around, here's the fix, OMG. So I did exactly what you suggested. I got myself a mirror, it's right here, it's up on next to the window and it I can see it from here, but it also can reflect the door. So simple, I don't know, it's, it's actually a feng shui mirror and I read which one to get to let abundance flow in. Uh, and then I got so excited doing that fix from your book that I thought, oh, yeah, I'm going to get the things for outside the house, too, to push away negative energy and also to bring in the flow. These are so inexpensive. These things are like $9, $14, you know, mm -hmm. to get these feng shui mirrors. So I was so grateful you include things like that. Yeah, well, the first step is, of course, like I said, is if you can see the door of the space that you are in. And I mean by the door, the door coming from the hallway, the door that you would take to come into the space, right? So like, for example, I have three doors here, right? I have a door to a closet, door to a, ba a bathroom, and door to, to the hallway, right? So I need to see, first of all, to get in what we call a power position. Now, sometimes that is not always possible, right? That's in your case, it's like, it's not so possible. So, you know, I'd say that to people, well, you know, perhaps it's fixed into the wall or it's just like you, your your desk is too big. You know, literally you can't change it around. Right. So then we need to do a little fix. And so one of the fixes is to put like a little mirror, you know, left or right from you to so that in like a glance of your eyes, you can see what's going on behind you. Yeah. So why is it important to sit in a power position? And I know you cannot do it in your desk, but perhaps you can do it in your dining room. Perhaps you can do it in your uh, sofa. Perhaps you can do it in any meeting you have outdoors. So always sit first uh, and go earlier into any meeting that you see the people coming in. When you see people coming in, you're actually literally seeing the energy coming in and you are going to have a different conversation with people. Yeah. And so that's the first step. We seen that when people have their desk against the wall or even against the window, it's like they're very quickly are hitting a wall, right? I always say money doesn't come in from the walls. It doesn't come in from the windows. It comes in through people that comes into your space, even if you do online, right? That's like the, the, the tradition, right? That's like the major rule. But that can be, if you can't do it at home, you perhaps any meeting you have, you can still do it as much as you can do it. Like even in the bedroom, when you wake up, you want to see the door, right? Mm -hmm. Because then you see romance coming in. Having it 24 hours a day all the time, it's not always possible because we still have a designed home a certain way, yeah? So you always try to fix it. So one of the things you can fix it is that mirror, but also like a high back chair. Like I have a very high back chair. Even my head is protected. Yeah. Yes. Okay. So in your case, I would look for a different chair, to be honest. So where it's even higher so that literally your neck is protected and you have armrests. Like you're I really have both. Yes. Yeah. So if you have that, then you have a protection shield. Yeah. Mm. So that's one of the things I would suggest you do. Um, and it's like, we try always to upgrade. Yeah, we always like try to move things around as much as we can, because every small thing we do is already a change of flow. 
Yeah. Now, perfect feng shui does not exist. I've never had a house and I've lived in 24 houses in my life. You know, I never had a home that was perfect feng shui. But each time you add something to it, it starts shifting the energy. Oh my gosh. Yeah, I know. Even in the bedroom, uh, the photos or the paintings I have are of couples, different forms of couples that are very beautiful. Uh, Two of everything, the two nightstands, the two lamps. Uh, There's, there's, you know, so many easy things like that. And I want to ask you, so when you say in your book, just the repositioning of a desk or the removal or addition of a picture, the placement or covering of a mirror, the display of a candle in the right place, and our fortunes, our health, our life, our family dynamics can radically change in a short time. How is that determined? Is that on an individual basis, or are there global fixes? And what the heck, once you get a partner involved, no less a family who might all have different numbers? Yeah. So let's first focus back on what feng shui really is, right? So feng shui is an energy system of China that's been around for thousands of years. And I always say the first um, masters of feng shui were probably shamans that could really tune into the energy fields and, and listen, like when they did something or they repositioned something, or they listened to nature probably and saw like, hey, um, if I'm here, if I'm sitting here, I feel different or when we design something this way, it feels feels nicer. So I think there were just people that were just very clear about energy. Now, feng shui is in that sense, an energy system that we can compare like with acupuncture or tai chi or qigong. It's all following the the flow of energy, the, the vitality force that we have, that each one of us have. So maybe the force we with you, as we say in Star Wars, right? But it's, it's that, may the, may the chi be with you, right? May, may you be in that flow of energy. And so feng shui is not about the body directly, but it's about the body around your body, right? So acupuncture, like we put needles, we put acupressure, or we do certain movements with Tai Chi and Qigong, we start creating breath and movement. Yeah, that's the, the Qi that we're using. In Feng Shui, we are looking at the home around your body. That's where you sleep, where you live, where you work. And that home also has a breath, and that's air right? And air is connect with the wind, the wind directions, and also connect with movement. And movement is where do you sit, where you're going to sleep. So each time you go to these places, you create movement. So in a way, it's a a bigger field of acupuncture. And so over the thousands of years, the feng shui masters have seen there's certain colors, certain positioning based on your birthday, um, certain elements like water, fire, earth, metal, and wood. When we place that in certain directions, it just creates a different frequency, a different vibration. And so we all intuitively have some of that experience when we go to a certain place and we're like, oh my God, I love it here, right? You would keep hanging out there. It can perhaps not be the most aesthetic, pleasing, but there's a vibe there. Right. And then there are other areas like what you talked about your bedroom as a child, you're fearful there. I mean, everybody would come in like there's nothing to be a fear, afraid of, but you felt there was a bad vibe there. Yeah. So why is that? Perhaps if I would go into the bedroom now, I would say, oh, it's because you're sleeping the wrong direction. The images, the colors were really not good for you. So I don't know what it is, but we feel it. Mm-hmm. Yeah. So some people say, well, it's feng shui intuitively. I said, actually, it's not. It's an energy system based on formulas, really mathematical based formulas that they have built up over the years. But some people are quite intuitive towards it. Yeah. And kind of feel the natural flow of things because they're more sensitive. Yeah. So that based on that, there is one of the formulas that we're working on is based on your birthday. So people can actually in the book Feng Shui Alive, it's all explained, but also we asked people to download my free app. So it's a Murray Diamond app that's on all the app stores for free. And so what people then put in there, they put in their birthday. Uh, when they're born and their gender when they're born. 
because it's based on the male or female DNA. So it's a whole formula. It's not numerology that you have to uh, add numbers up. It's a whole formula that is calculated in the app itself. And then based on that, people do get a compass. Yeah. And so the compass, what we call the diamond compass, is based on your number. Yeah. It's based on your birthday. Yeah. So I'm number five. I don't know what your number is, Debbie. I'm nine. You're nine. Okay, great. So your you will see that for each one there will be four wind directions. So four directions where the wind, the the breadth of the house is the strongest. For me, that is southwest. For you, it's east. Yeah. So people hold on the compass and they hold it like in the center of a space where they're working, sleeping or living. Mm -hmm. And then they're looking what's in that success direction. So in my success direction, you can't really see it because it's behind me in this room. There are my books. Yeah, I think you see the books, but there are also awards there. There are symbols of success there, right? For example, a golden crone. I have there. I have a beautiful uh, diamond. Like, of course, not a real big diamond, but a fake diamond, right? So, like, I have certain symbols there that when I look at it, it makes my heart sing. Yeah. So it feels like it's aligned with me. Yeah. There's also a place where you can put your vision board, for example. Now, normally my vision board is there, but I take it off because I don't want everybody to see my vision board. Um, but you also will see. Um, there is a relationship direction and that's indicated in pink and so for me that's west for you that's north actually yeah right and so what people then do they hold the compass in the room that they are sleeping working or living in and see what is there at this moment yeah because what has been there for a while has been affecting you subconsciously it's never conscious level it's on a subconscious level that's been affecting you so if you have clutter there right then it's been affecting you because you're you are a vibrational being and so your vibration is picking up based on your original energy profile. So we are like, um, I would say energized that way, yeah? So for you, your energy will be energized by add, you know, activating East for success, relationship for North. If you put there something that is like an image of a lonely woman, then don't be surprised then that you will say to the universe, it's like, this is the message. It's like, I call it like a three dimensional vision board. Yeah, so everything around you is giving a message from you to the universe. Yeah, so when you put on there something and it's not what you're really up to or you're not something you want, you're blocking that vibration between you and the universe. Yeah, so when people put something different and say, I want romance, and they put the image of a romance there, then suddenly they're giving themselves subconsciously the message, I am open to romance because it's their wind energy it's their vibration they breathe that in and out because it's in that direction mm. and so based on that you first focus on your personal number and of course the book feng shui your life and the app is all aligned together and so and then you look at your partner and then you look for your family for example for your children in their bedroom right uh, for your partner perhaps in their workspace or together in the living room or together in the bedroom so you always can align things together and this is how personal feng shui is based wow so you have no idea we've never met before you don't even know that i have a background in shamanism that you would even say that and i don't remember oh, wow what yes and so this, I'm just mind blown listening to you. Our bedroom is in the North. Mm. The East is our going out to our backyard. And I am so into that backyard. I go out every single morning. I do my shaman practice. I garden. I love to garden. I love flowers and plants and beautiful trees. I bought great patio furniture, like just intuitively. I love beautiful things anyway. Yep. We have a pyramid over um, our patio couch and a crystals hanging there. And to boot, this is sort of in the South, but I mean, this is, yeah. But no, it's East of, the, so East of the main house is a back house. The renter moved out. We're turning it into a healing temple. Perfect. So I yeah. can do music and shamanism there. 
Well, that's perfect because east is your success direction. Yeah. Now the east is the healer. Like as you said, you're the energy number in my system is you're the healer. Mm -hmm. So the east stands for everything with nature, like mm -hmm. the flowers and the plants and everything to do with healing. And the east is actually also connected with healing practices from the past. Yeah. So the native traditions. Yeah, yes. so you are totally on goal on purpose, uh, Debbie, with what you do, because that's actually what I do believe that the shamans from China were like understanding the energy of the mountains. They were tuning into the energy of the, the water and the rivers mm -hmm. and seeing how that influenced people in their energy field and their chi. Right. And so there are five elements that we need in feng shui to be in balance. Right. We need the air that is stands for metal. Actually, uh, we need the water. We need the earth energy. We need the wood. That means nature. And we need a uh, fire. Yeah. So when we have these five elements in harmony and somebody can need sometimes more um, uh, fire than another person yeah depending on their energy number there will be different flows like for example i am very, very much earth and metal yeah mm -hmm. so you will see i will wear a lot of like i have like a metal color on today right so um i will do a little bit of fire but you rarely see me with a lot of reds but i can do still red uh, nails right mm -hmm. so um but for example, you will not see so much uh, me with wood because wood is not of my strongest uh, elements. Doesn't mean I don't love nature, but I won't bring it too much into my house. Yes, plants, yes, but not like uh, wearing greens. That's something that doesn't work. But for example, my daughter, green is super good for her. And I didn't tell her as a child, but she would always pick green clothes, yeah? But I would always go for the golds and the whites, yeah, because that's metal colors, yeah. So when we go shopping, we shop completely different, but it's because our energy is different. What is yeah? your daughter? She's a nine, like you. Ah, and she's a nine. What is her predominant element? Well, it's actually wood and water, yeah. So blues, greens um, are really the, her dominant colors, yeah, yeah. Oh so God. I think you love aqua blue, right? Yeah. Oh, teal, teal turquoise. Yeah. I live in yeah. these colors, forest green, olive green. Yeah. Yeah. Absolutely. Yeah. And then you will see your wisdom is actually, um, and your health uh, needs some uh, purples and lilacs. So that will be definitely, so you will have a totally different color palette than I have. Yeah. This is so crazy. I just ordered a purple winter coat. Like, I, I am not surprised. <laughs> That's actually really good for your health, you know, purple. Yeah. Right. So it's just it's just a different vibe. Right. So for me, Southwest is my success direction. Southwest, one of the colors for Southwest is pink. So I have a lot of pinks. Yeah. So my daughter would never in a thousand years get a pink coat. Right. I would buy anything in pink and gold and white, you know? So it's just because it's like, when I see people in tune with their soul, they're in tune with their chi, they're in tune with their color palette. So it's really your energetic color palette that you have. Yeah. It makes so much sense. And everything you say, Marie, makes sense because I know, I imagine everybody watching this, listening to this knows, you can walk in an office space or a home and perhaps there's a fountain outside, but for me, especially inside, or in a garden. I mean, in, in certain places, not every place, some places they feel cold to me, but there are certain places where they are and it's just heaven yeah. or there's a fireplace and it's just so. I I am very sensitive to elements. I don't, I don't do what you do, but, you know, just as a sensitive being, yeah. I can feel feel locations and it makes a tremendous difference. So regarding, let's start with our business before our personal future. So our business, are there some simple things that people can do that would radically change their business using yeah. Feng Shui? And I guess these would be more global. Yeah. And I would say, first of all, like if you can sit in a power position, that's always going to give you more 
um, a good reputation. Yeah, and people will honor you more as an expert. The second thing is to look at your success direction in your office and then place there things that really are to do with your business. It could be your uh, flyers, it could be your books, it could be your products, like put something there, right? Um, and even around you, just make sure that what you see is something connected with your business. Like I remember this woman and she had like all nudes, um, images of nude women <laughs> hanging around in her office. Now I was asking her, are you an escort service? And she was like, no, I'm not. I'm into, you know, creating production for movies. I said, well, have you done productions? She said, yes. So what are the movies? So hang images from these movies that you have been working on and future movies. Like focus on the things that are around you. Don't bring too much family pictures into your, your office. One picture great on your desk, but not like everything around you. It's not your business. Focus on that. Yeah. Then what I definitely would suggest, activate your relationship direction. Like my relationship direction is global. I think yours is also Debbie worldwide. You know, people can listen to your podcast, to your tele, your, everything that you're doing in the media. Put a globe out oh. in your relationship direction. Yeah. Okay. And as you're putting the globe there, you know, you're like saying symbolically, I'm connected with everybody that's ever connected with me. Yeah, it's a very just simple thing. Don't do a small globe, something you can see the countries on. Yeah, do an updated country globe, right? Not like something that was a globe 10 years ago. People, <laughs> worlds are changing. So do that, right? And then also um, organize, you know, declutter your uh, your office you know even on your desk don't have too much clutter around you when you're talking uh, add some gold looking items like i have like uh, something gold or something in it put that on there and definitely for cash flow um that fountain that you're talking about yeah so but the fountain changes every year and actually this year debbie you have the fountain should be in the east of your office because that's the most cash flow that comes in is to the east. Now you are actually based on your energy number. We have time feng shui and you are actually starting a new nine year cycle in your professional life. I don't know if you have experienced that, but it's like total yeah. new energy that is coming in for nine years. So you just closed off a nine year cycle and you start a new because we're thinking in cycles of nine in feng shui because they're nine numbers, yeah? And so it's a very auspicious year for you. Last year was more about restructuring and healing still mm -hmm. and letting go of certain things from the past, yes. yeah? Yes. So we can actually look at just the feng shui, but we also can look at what we call the time uh, cycles of your energy number, yeah? So that's a little bit more advanced feng shui, but that's kind of what we do. and. Um, it's very interesting to look at your office and the positioning, if you can, on top of it, you know, if you look at your compass, um, if you can also face, so if you look at your compass and your directions, if you can face, look at one of your good directions, that will actually stimulate your alpha brain waves. Mm -hmm. um, even if you do healing, for example, any healing modality you do, face one of your good directions, your alpha frequency will go even into theta frequencies and you will heal better. And you will see on the compass there are empty directions. The empty directions are always creating beta frequencies and the healing is not happening so fast or the abundance is not attracted so much. So right now I'm facing wisdom. Yeah. So why is wisdom? Because I'm teaching right now. I'm educating people. Yeah. But um, I would never sit and my students are used to that if they are doing meditations or they're doing um, healing modalities, they always take their compass and they turn themselves into one of their good directions. But for example, you do uh, rituals around money, you will go to your success direction, do rituals for healing, go to your health direction. So you can actually tap in. They're like windows of energy that you have into the universe tap into it and your whole chakras, uh, all your chakras, your whole energy field connects with that and you will actually manifest fast and heal stronger. So when it comes to placement of water features, plants, mirrors, flowers, crystals, candles, or images, like you talked about, 
for shifting the energy in the room and our personal energy. Is there anything global about any of those that you can share for everybody? Well, so there are general rules that everybody can use, of course, right? So for example, plants, plants are the best in the east, southeast and the south area of a space that can be of your home. Like for example, you have the garden in the east. So that's really beautiful, right? You're sitting in the garden in the east. Now, if that would be in the south, that would be great too. Like I have the garden east, southeast, south. Yeah, because that's the best place for a garden, because that's where the green is the strongest. Yeah, everything with nature is the strongest. Doesn't mean you cannot have it in the north or in the southwest or in the north. It's just, it's not that strong. Okay, so crystals, for example, are best in the southwest, west, or northwest, because that's all uh, earth elements and the northeast. Yeah, so all crystals and metal elements can be placed in West and Northwest. So there are certain areas and that's all in the book, of course, right? But what I want to talk about a little bit about what you place there is just um, like think about plants. And I, I'm looking at you right now. You have really your plant setting around you, behind you is really not positive feng shui. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So you have a fern behind you and it's all very spiky leaves. There are actually I considered all knives that are behind you. Yeah. And they're very close to you, even if it's just on a camera. Right. So what it does, it's like you're getting attacked by all these knives and that will actually diminish your good reputation. Yeah. People won't think so highly of you as they should actually think about you so the first thing i would like for you to do is take that away the second you have another image there and it looks like a uh, dried up flowers yeah so they're dead flowers there's no life force in it yeah so i would suggest to change that yeah so if you put flowers around you put like a blossoming orchid or a plant with a round leaves or something that is you know um green and round and and flowering Right. So that is giving subconsciously a different message to people. Yeah. Not just only to your own energy field, because I've seen people with a plant like this getting sick all the time. Yeah. Mm. Because it's all the time knives hitting their energy field, their aura field. May I and ask you have... a question about this? So let's say somebody lives in an apartment or a home. It's just dark. There's not a yeah. lot of light coming in. Right. They don't do very successfully with plants or flowers indoors. Do you say no fake plants or what would they do in that case? Yeah, I say fake plants because oh. the thing is, our mind is not seeing a difference between the real or the fake plants. We could smell a difference, yeah. but, but the image is like when an athlete is, for example, running the marathon and in his mind, he's running the marathon. They can see and measure that the muscles will react to the imagery. Yeah. So I have fake plants, to be honest, uh, in my bedroom because uh, in my sorry, in my office, I'm, I don't have a lot of green fingers. So outside the gardener takes care of it inside. Of course, I get some fresh flowers if I can. But there are some places I just I forget to water them. So mm -hmm. but it doesn't matter. My conscious mind is aware that it's not there. But my subconscious mind just thinks, oh, this beautiful blossoming plant there. Right. So you can do that. But if it's a darker space, definitely add more light to it. Yeah. So more lights, more candles, like light is the first representation of life force. Mm. Yeah. So don't have dark areas in the house, especially when it comes darker at night, just put some lights or candles on just, you know, just cr create some more vibration. And a candle can be placed anywhere, by the way, because it shows chi. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So it's not just considered fire. A fire element is like literally a, a fire uh, place. Yeah. Or like a big, big candle, but like small candles, they're just showing there's energy. Okay. And this is all fascinating. Do you have any stories, success stories, people you worked with? who were in one condition and then you feng shuied whatever situation or area and what the change was, what they experienced instead. 
Well, I want to share a story of a man that reached out to us and he was living in a tent um, here in LA. I mean, really like on the bottom of, of his life, right? And so he was asking me like, you know, can I have, um, you know, some suggestion? I don't have any money. I cannot place plants. I cannot place, place crystals. I'm just living in a tent camp here mm-hmm. in LA. And I said, can you get some paper and, um, and just perhaps um, some uh, scotch tape? And I just want you to write down on this paper, like white quartz crystal, fountain, uh, success, money in the directions. And so I told him what are the directions he found somebody that for him, like he didn't even have a, a phone, right, to do this. So he would like ask somebody where's the south, where's the northwest, like with a compass. He started putting post it notes, oh. yeah, on his tent. Within a few months, somebody offered him a car. Yeah, an old car, so he could now sleep in a car and start looking for a job. Yeah, so then he found a job just doing the same thing with the car, looking uh-huh. at his direction every night wherever he was parking with post it notes. Yeah, uh-huh. and then he found a job, he got an apartment. Now he lives, and we are now four years later, an apartment, three bedrooms, has an amazing girlfriend, beautiful job. And so I was able to meet him in person. And now he goes every week back to the tent camp and teaches people how to activate their directions. So I say to people, don't tell me you cannot do it. Yeah, you, everybody can do it. Even if you put a post-it note up. Yeah, because that's what I did when I was coming to America for the first time in 2001. I didn't have a lot of money. I literally had a few suitcases and a couple of thousands of dollars that when I immigrated here. And so I literally made a vision board, put on my vision board, post-it notes. And one of the post notes that said, I'm going to be in a movie seen by millions of people that will transform the world. Yeah. Well, that's amazing. I put that on a post-it note, right? In my success direction in my office. Oh my yeah? gosh. Right. Okay. And one of the first things that started happening was that I had nothing. I had really no furniture. I had nothing. And suddenly people coming to me, they were already students and they started giving me furniture, right? <laughs> they gave me a desk. They gave me a computer. They gave me sofa. They gave me a television from things that they didn't need anymore. Suddenly I had a full house, Mm, even the linens, the towels, everything was given to me, right? And then I thought like, you know, to be in a movie, I need to get a fake Oscar. I need a symbol, (laughs) right? So I got myself a fake Oscar and I still have that one actually here. Oh my God, this is so And so, and I put on it a Marie Diamond, 2005 because i was 2001 at that time so i need a few you know years to get into a movie i didn't know it was going to be an actress or a producer i had no idea right so the first thing that happened is within a few weeks i got a new client that came to me one of my first big clients and she was marcy shimov she was later on in the secret with me. She became my student. She started opening doors to me. So suddenly I got clients like John Gray, Bob Proctor, Jack Canfield. They all felt so stuck and she's like, Marie has the answer for us. Wow. Yeah. And then I got my first Oscar winning client. Within a month, I put the Oscar out in my success direction. Yeah. And as I put it there, now, now I have more than 20 Oscar winning clients over the years. But it's just like, I have to tell my own story, getting into the secret in 2005, it was on my vision board. Yeah. And I had my Oscar out. And when people say, so how did you get in the secret? I said, well, it was on my vision board. It was in my success direction. Yeah. Because in these four years, I became quite known that I became part of an organization and a big mastermind group where the film was also filmed with other teachers. And this is how I got into the secret. So I would not have been in the secret without that little yellow post-it note that I put in my success direction. So how difficult is it? Wow. That is a goosebump story. 
it is so inspiring. I am absolutely going to do something. I have a different dream, but I am absolutely going to do that. And I hope everybody who's watching is also inspired to get the book, to get the compass, the app, figure out where's your success area, clean it up. Don't have plants like mine. I won't ever again. <laughs> I promise. Thank you for that. And yeah, it's not just about being pretty, you know, pretty stuff backgrounds. It's really, you know, what's functional and what's happening energetically. And so whatever your dream is, folks, yeah, at least a post-it, if not a vision board, but certainly something symbolic. Wow. Oh my gosh. Um, so let me ask you this, because uh, I think I'm really like tongue tied <laughs> over the beauty of what you just shared. And thank you. Thank you for that. Thank you for going so big. Like we yeah. all need to see that, right? Everybody, yeah. no matter where you started, you've had a depression at some point in your life if you didn't start here. And yeah. so for each of us to consider a leap of that magnitude, and to have a dream that magnificent and then to be living that dream and then some i just i love that is a dare to dream and you did you it did. is dare to dream and that's why i loved when i saw your podcast it was like that i dare to dream and you know the secret has now reached more than 500 million people so i would say check that's done <laughs> <laughs> Bucket list. Okay. Bucket list. <laughs> wow. So Feng Shui, how does this practice of Feng Shui, Maria, adapt to different cultural contexts or geographic locations? How does that work? Well, you know, it all works based on the compass, right? So the there are some advanced techniques, especially in the Southern Hemisphere, that we probably would do differently, right? But um, the North Pole is still the North Pole and the South Pole, the South Pole. So we still can work with the compass direction. And of course, we need to adapt to the culture, right? Or your religious background. So for example, if um, the wisdom direction that we're uh, activating uh, based on your energy number could be different, you know, it's like if you are Catholic, then you will activate something different for your wisdom, like putting an image of Jesus. But if you're a shaman, perhaps you will put your shamanistic um, tools in that wisdom direction. Or if you are you know, Muslim that you perhaps would put the Quran there. So you you have to understand feng shui is not a belief system. It's just an energy system that you can adapt to wherever you are and wherever that you love. And there are images that people in, I would say Spain would hang, there are different images than they would put in somewhere in Dubai, for example, right? So you need to adapt that and connect with you personally. Yeah, um, because that is the, the the beauty of it. You know, it's like I said, your home is a three dimensional vision board. Make sure it is representing who you are and it's also aligned with the future that you desire. And that is depending on who you are, where you live and what you dream of. Mm -hmm. Do you think that Feng Shui is evolving with this ever increasing digital and interconnected world? Well, it is in a sense that, you know, you can feng shui your, uh, your app store, or you can feng shui your computer, or so there are things you can evolve. And every feng shui master um, is actually always adding a new way of looking at things. Like uh, me as a feng shui master for 30 years, I've started really focusing on colors. Yeah, because um, sometimes, especially in the Asian world, they go with certain colors that are more uh, Asian traditional, uh, good luck colors. Well, over the years, I received a lot of information and downloads on 24 quantum colors that actually, when we work with these colors, it helps us to raise our vibration to connect with our soul and to connect with the quantum field. So this is actually the 24 colors of the multifaceted diamond that we're talking about. And actually everybody can tune into that. If you are looking at your app, you will see that around the circle of the diamond compass, there are actually 24 colors indicated, yeah? So people that are in tune with their soul, they will resonate with these colors. Like you are like the, the blues and the greens and the purples are actually quantum colors that work for you, 
yeah and so i'm not going with uh, the palette of uh, the design the interior design it, it, i'm focusing completely on soul colors yeah and so we're placing these colors even if it's just a small item of that it like could be a candle in that color right um and by placing this little i could puncture pressure points with colors just changes the vibration and people start subconsciously getting that message and there are 24 qualities that we're focusing on so that's something that i brought in over the years um what we call quantum feng shui so with colors so you will see over the generations and thousands of years uh, all great feng shui masters have always brought a new concept a new idea in to that helps because it's evolving into the awareness of that time. That is so incredible. You know, uh, recently we had our house painted mm -hmm. and our bedroom, I like very um, calming colors is the best way I can say it. I'm, I really resonate yeah. with calm. And even though gray is not my color at all, there is something about particular grays that can be very relaxing and so I think our bedroom, you know, basically it's white with some, you know, gray accents and like um, tawny tan accents, like wood accents. But we, I took this, um, just a risk. And I, there was this sort of green moss color. Uh, so that's that in North. So our bedroom is North and it is on the North wall. And I thought, gosh, I don't know how this is going to go in here. I don't. And I actually asked the painter because I was so nervous, you know, I was playing with some colors. And he said, I think it'll look great. And my God, it is so gorgeous. You walk in the room and that's the wall you see is this beautiful, just mm, rich green color. And it actually makes the room. So this stuff you're talking about, especially when you resonate with that color, mm -hmm. it just can make or break how you look, where you are, your location, everything. I even think cars, you know, what color are you going to get in your car, interior, exterior? I'm into all of that. Yeah, and it's so true. Um, you know, people that are in tune with energy, they will feel more that, you know, colors are living beings yeah they're living qualities and so you know sometimes i come to people's homes and the houses are so monotone and i'm like oh my god we have to get a pop of color in here right even if it's just uh, literally pillows yeah that you place in a sofa or you put some candles or you know you can just play with that it doesn't have to be suddenly painting everything around you to be honest right it's just that you need to see that what is what works for you right um and but there's definitely in a bedroom colors i would never wear never put in that's reds yeah i don't say pop of reds is okay but like red curtains or red carpet or red walls it's too much fire and so i would say would you sleep when there's a fire around you you wouldn't subconsciously it's a no the same with blues if you would have like blue walls or blue carpets or blue covers again would you sleep when you're drowning in water okay so you have to think about it. so water and fire there can be pops of it but nothing major right and so many times people say like i can't sleep it's too much red yeah or i always feel like so restless and i feel like i'm depressed because there's too much water yeah so water images fire images don't put that in your bedroom yeah genius I have two questions for you before we end. The first is, I have a quote from you, Marie, which is, move fear with, move forward without fear. And even if you have fear, move forward anyway, even if your knees are knocking. I know you have a new TV show. Do you mind to tell us about it? And were you nervous? <laughs> well, um, yeah. So one of the things is last year when I turned 60, I was like, <laughs> I got this amazing voice in the morning, like go mainstream. And so I was like, you know, I'm known in the self-help and spiritual world, but mainstream, I'm not perhaps yet. I need to bring Feng Shui forward. So I created a TV show, Feng Shui Your Life. Of course, I attracted an amazing business partner. And the the first um, uh, airing will actually be done on Tubi uh, on the Fox platform. Um, so in the coming months. So if 
going fox is not mainstream, right? I don't know what it is. So I'm super excited. It will be, of course, on, on their app. So, um, and so was I nervous? No, I'm, I'm never nervous. It's like I'm so in a flow. I love being in front of a camera. It's something I learned from being in The Secret. That was actually my first on-camera interview ever was The Secret. So I was so unknown. <laughs> that was my first interview. Um, but I would say, yes, it's... Um, it's, it's I'm not nervous because I'm on my on purpose. Yeah, this is what I'm doing. And we're doing already a second season in the coming months. So um, yeah, it's like everybody's super excited about it. And I, I do believe that so many uh, support can be given to families and to businesses if they have good feng shui. Mm, congratulations. I am so, so, so happy for you. And Marie, this is Dare to Dream. What are you next, dear to dream? What are your future dreams and goals? Wow, that's um, a good question to ask. Well, I would say I really, my dream for the next 10 years is to, um, as I reach the secret, with the secret 500 million, that now with feng shui, I would reach 500 million people and to um, have a lot of TV shows coming up and we do some other TV shows. So I really want to be a transformational TV mogul in the next 10 years. Yes, I see that for you. Thank you so, so much for coming on the show. And folks, the book is called Feng Shui Your Life. Her name is Marie Diamond. You can get this on Amazon. Also find out more about her on her website, mariediamond.com. And her show's coming out on Fox. If you would like to follow and learn more how to have an exceptional business and personal life. And I end today's show with this quote from Marie Diamond. A misconception about feng shui is that you need to spend a lot of money. However, painting walls, buying new furniture, filling your home with expensive crystals, none of this is necessary. I believe that feng shui is most effective when you make the most of what you already have. Whether it's learning how to best sort away clutter, giving your rooms a thorough dusting, and closets a complete sort through, or buying some colorful candles from your local store, feng shui can be practiced at any budget. All you need is a little creativity. Be sure to subscribe to this number one transformation conversation, Dare to Dream with Debbie Dashinger, next week's on the show, I will be featuring several amazing guests. Octurus Ra will be here, Dr. Greta Chamberlain and Robert Quicksilver, all to channel, shed light, and offer direction in this ever-changing world. Remember, it can just be a candle or a post-it that can change your life. Dare to dream.